We're going to start this puppy up. Clear, drop. And welcome back to tip of the week. This week, I want to talk about maybe a little retraction from a previous tip. The last tip we had, we talked about thermal couples, and I told you about a great meter that I got from Amazon for like 35 bucks. That was a great way to read temperatures off of your engine's thermal couples. It turns out when I went to actually use this on my engine, I discovered a major flaw that was a big problem. And I'm going to leave it to you to decide not who's at fault, but more of a buyer beware, be careful, or operator error. You be the judge. Here we go. This meter had two channels allowing for two thermal couples to be read simultaneously. And it works real good. I tested it out. Temperatures matched with two different probes. It's like, so what could be the problem? Well, I installed it on a brand new engine, two cycle engine. Those are a little more trickier sometimes to measure our uh, head temperatures, water temperature, coolant temperature is what I'm trying to say and exhaust gas temperature, especially for a first startup. You want to make sure everything is running just fine. Well, it didn't look that way. So here is the problem with this meter. It is on my engine. On the left side, which is the top reading, we have a probe in our coolant. On the right side, we have a probe inside of our our exhaust manifold. And notice they are extremely close, which is not bad considering that the fluid inside of our engine has been stabilized and very close to the temperature inside the exhaust manifold. So that's a good confirmation that the probes are working properly. And by the way, it's about 80 degrees in this room. So what went wrong? Obviously, with the engine running, we know what a water temperature should be. It should be somewhere no more than the boiling point. That would be way too hot for water. And our exhaust gas temperature, we expect it to be in the 800, 900, 1000 degree range Fahrenheit. And when we ran the engine, the numbers were off, way off. Our water temperature was way high, as if it were way into the 200s, and the engine was running fine. And our exhaust gas temperature was really low. It's like we can't be that rich. And so as we use the meter, and remember, this is when we first started the engine, so we're trying to examine how the engine was doing. We couldn't figure out what was wrong because obviously it looks like everything is working fine now at rest. Well, one sharp individual whose name will be withheld until I get permission to use it said, let's try an experiment. Let's pull off one of our probes and he simply pulled it out. And all of a sudden, the water temperature fell within range. It was below 200 where it should have been. Plugging back in the exhaust gas temperature, the number, the uh, water temperature went way up. And conversely, pulling out the water temperature, the exhaust gas temperature went way up where it was supposed to be. And plugging this in, it went way down. So it was very clear that with the engine running, that these two temperatures were interacting and really Thank heavens, pulled the numbers so far outside of their normal range that we could tell something was just wrong. So what good is a meter if you can't trust its settings? So we went back to the manual just to make sure there wasn't something we were missing. And we found something very interesting. 
reading from the manual here, I found one sentence that sounded like it had something to do with what was going on. Let me read it to you. It's just one sentence. Measurement errors may occur if voltages on the measurement surfaces result in potentials greater than one volt between the two thermocouples. What are they talking about? Let's take a look at our two thermocouples on the engine. Here's the thermocouple. This is a probe in the water jacket on the head. And here's the thermocouple that is in the exhaust manifold for our EGT temperatures. Let me read the sentence again. Measurement errors may occur if voltages on the measurement surfaces between the two thermocouples result in potentials greater than one volt. Well, what surfaces are we talking about? This is in this aluminum head and this surface is in the steel exhaust manifold. Well, I guess, yes, they are electrically connected. What the manual is saying is if there's a voltage between this point and this point, greater than one voltage, measurement errors will occur. Well, why would we get a voltage between here and here? Well, then it dawned on me, we're talking about thermocouples. And thermocouples 101 from our last lesson was that when you have dissimilar metals, we have aluminum, we have steel manifold, and we have probes made out of who knows what. And what else do we have? We have a lot of temperature between the hot manifold and the hot head, and these two probes are electrically connected via the surface of the engine with heat, dissimilar metals, they are generating their own voltage. That's what a thermocouple is, right? So that one sentence in the manual says that errors could occur. Well, how do you solve that problem? Well, it turns out the next sentence describes the solution. When potential differences are anticipated between the thermocouples, use electrically insulated thermocouples. <laughs> so there you go. That's kind of like saying, well, if you have a problem, don't do that. Um, so the real solution, if we wanted to fix this particular um, application, would be to find some way to insulate at least one of the probes from the surface of the engine. Right now, there's some uh, copper washers that in one case seal against water and the other one seal against exhaust gas. Very hot surfaces in both cases. I suppose if we had a little ring of uh, Teflon or something that could electrically insulate that probe from the engine, then the temperatures would go back within reason. Um, so for the time being, the meter is good in our application for exactly one temperature at a time. So we'd be pulling plugs out or at least understanding it. So uh, talk about fine print uh, that was tricky to find out. Um, not all applications that use thermocouples have the thermocouples electrically connected, right? They could be, one could be in a glass of water, one could be in a furnace, uh, plenum, you know, whatever you're measuring. In our case, both probes are in the same electrical box, if you will, so they can talk to each other. So. Hands off to the manufacturer for letting us know of the problem, but oh my gosh, talk about discovering a flaw in instrumentation. Um, it would have been nice if that was in the description, uh, in the Amazon description, but I guess that's a little ridiculous to go into that detail uh, on there. So uh, just want to be aware that meter is great, except in the conditions where the two probes are electrically connected um, and there's a lot of temperature. If the temperatures were the same between the two probes as we know from our thermocouple engineering there would be no voltage generated then it would be the same but because we have dissimilar metals and lots of heat we get some voltages. So 
Lessons learned, let's go forward. We can use the meter for one at a time reading. And we'll call it a good day after that. So until next time, back to building.